Uh, now, back here in the studio, we're going to bring you an update from social media very soon. But before we get to that, I want us to say good evening to our guest. He is, uh, for, and has been for many months now, uh, the Deputy Minister for Power. Let's say good evening to Mr. John Jinapo. How are you? Thank you for coming. Thank you, Roberta. Thank you. Well, interesting times we live in. And uh, several hours uh, after the closing of polls, in fact, uh, uh, going into 72 hours very soon uh, after the, the closing of the polls, tell me, what is the mood in the camp at uh, Election uh, Central for NDC? First of all, let, let me apologize for my hoarse voice. I've, I've had a very hectic and laborious campaign. And so I virtually lost my voice and had some chest problem. I'm recovering. So mm. <coughs> a lot of that going around in your party. <laughs> kindly, kindly bear with me, viewers, if my voice is not that audible. Uh, certainly, we, we remain calm. We remain upbeat. Uh, I just left our uh, center, and clearly our men and women are working very, very hard. Don't forget, President Mahama gave his all. Indeed, I do recall that when he came to my constituency, at the last day of my campaign launch, uh, he got there at 3 a.m. 3 a.m. By the time he left, it was 5 a.m. From there, he drove to Tamale. From Tamale, he flew to Kumase. From Kumase, he went to Sunyane. From Sunyani, he came to Accra. And so for three conservative, consecutive days, it was obvious that he had no sleep. And so clearly, he's, he's done what every normal human being would stretch himself to his various limits. And so we are a bit, as I said, uh, the parliamentary is obvious. We lost quite a number. But if you look at the trend, President Muhammad did quite well, as against most of the parliamentarians. And if you take my constituency, for example, I increased the margin in terms of the gap from 600 to about 10,000 based on the previous election. But even with that, President Mahama beat me. He had about 63% and I had about 62%. And so I, I, I embarked on a very vigorous campaign. But yet, President Mahama's popularity soared over me. And so it tells you that it's not yet over. Let's remain calm. Let's remain focused. The president himself is poking, and in my opinion, he's demonstrated that he's a gentleman. You may not like President Mahama, you may not have voted for him, but his demeanor, his calm nature, and the way he spoke today. And when I got there, thousands of supporters chanting and jubilating, he came out, spoke for just about one or two minutes, and that brought calm, and everybody left. That is the mark of a leader. And so let's remain calm. We have a nation to govern. This nation would traverse beyond all of us. And so it's not a do and die affair. We are confident. We believe that we still have a very good chance of winning this election. And so let's get to the end of the road and let the EC, uh, which is the official body mandated to declare the results, do so. I came with my pinches, and a lot of people came with their pinches. I waited, took all my pinches, and brought them down. And so it's only proper that our agents insist on the right thing. We are not asking for anything extra. We are just saying that let's do a thorough, detailed, diligent job. So that at the end of the day, it's democracy that wins. Don't let us stampede the electoral commissioner or the electoral commission itself into making hasty decisions. That is what landed us in some of the issues we had in 2012. And so let's remain calm. Let the NDC people know that. We are confident, and let's see how it goes. Okay, now, um, a few hours ago, we had a glimpse at the, uh, the figures that the Electoral Commission has at the moment. Even though they haven't made the announcement, we had our cameras in the collation room, and we had a look on the screen of one of the uh, uh, party officials there. He graciously showed us the figures. And these are the EC's figures, not the party's figures. EC's figures. And, uh, and they indicated a lead of about 53% for Nana Ekufu Ado, as at a couple of hours ago, when the uh, Electoral Commission had received and confirmed that they had 200 and, uh, about 225 or so, 220 <coughs> to 225 of the constituency's results already in. Okay? So at that point, with just about 50 of the um, constituency's results to go, we had a 53% or so lead
for Nana Ekufo Adu. And what are the girl in terms of absolute figures? Uh, well, uh, well, well, of course, uh, we can do the mathematics on that for you later. But the, the point I, I'm, I'm seeking to make here is that do you believe that the remaining 50 constituencies could put your president as the winner of this year's election? Certainly, certainly. And that's why I said, let's deal with the figures. 53% of what? And if you look at the gap, mm. what is the gap in terms of absolute figures? Yes, well, percentages may work. Then two, you look at the remaining constituencies. What are the figures from those remaining constituencies? Another, another A constituency could be about 100,000. Yeah. So if you have 50 of those constituencies, 50 Another times, piece of information 000. we have is that um, about over 20 of those constituencies are from the Ashanti region. It doesn't matter. Let's look at the voter turnout. But you see, the most important thing is that there's no need to hasten. I mean, 72 hours, in my opinion, is, 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 is not a, a century. We've almost done 48 hours. I think it's about 5 o'clock. So we've done almost 48 hours. So let's keep our houses. And the ECR said that it intends the clearing the results within the 72 hours. It hasn't even said that you must have the 72 hours elapse before you make a declaration. And so in my opinion, yes, the MPP has every right to remain confident. The NDC has every right to remain confident. Nanado is spoken, President Mahama is spoken, and I think that we should allow cool heads to prevail. This is not the time to engage in unnecessary rhetoric. I think that we must just remain focused, let all the results come. Our men at the center are doing all the necessary cross-checking to ensure that the figures are accurate. And so let's do that and let the results come. And President has been very, very clear that he would accept the results from the electoral commissioner. I think that that's, that's something commendable. And so let's remain focused and see how it goes. Now, the men at the Collation Center have indicated that they have concerns about some discrepancies uh, in, in the results from uh, the remaining constituencies. Um, can you tell us about that and uh, which of the constituencies um, are, are your people concerned about? I think that I listened to Mr. Peter McMenu a couple of uh, minutes ago and he confirmed that there were some discrepancies and that they were being worked on. Of course, I may not be able to give you the fine details of it. The EC chairperson herself confirmed that there were issues of some discrepancies. And so that is a factual point. There is no doubt about that. But the question is whether those inaccuracies or discrepancies or errors or whatever you choose to call them or anomalies would have a significant impact or a dent on the final outcome of the elections. Does Let's your do party not have a, an official figure of how many constituencies there are problems with, the nature of these problems? Have you not had communication from your representatives at national uh, collation center? Certainly, and that is why we've raised that with the EC. If we do not have that information, if we do not have adequate information, we certainly couldn't have raised that with the EC. What you and mean is you, you personally don't no, have it? No, I mean, is, is that as an mean? individual, I don't need to keep that. We have a team that works on that, and so certainly they would work on that. And we have the NPP campaign manager confirm that, yes, there are some discrepancies. To have the chairperson of the electoral commission confirm that there are some anomalies and that those anomalies are being worked on and sorted tells you that we are taking this election seriously. And so let's go through the process. Let's do a good job for this country and for ourselves. And at the end of the day, we'll get the results out. I'm sure the results will be out as soon as possible. Former UN Secretary General Kofi Annan has, uh, has congratulated those, um, those of the uh, contestants who have conceded uh, so far to Nana Ekufuado, um, well, to, to, to who they consider to be the winner. And, uh, and he, has a, he has advised all who uh, can see from the obvious trends uh, that they are not going to win to concede. Uh, is that something that uh, your flag bearer would do? Certainly. If you look at the, uh, the candidates who have conceded, there's no way they're going to win. I'm not sure that if you give all these 50 or so constituencies to Dr. Indum, he's going to win. I'm not sure that if you give all the consequences remaining to Nana Kunado, she's going to win. But if you give all these consequences to John Mahama or Nana Kufado, you could have a turn around. And so I don't see the fuss about it. 
if they believe that you are doing 1% or less than 1%, and you decide, oh, look, I'm opting out, fair enough. John Mama says, oh, look, let the EC declare the results. I would respect the results. I think that he ought to be commended. Mm. And so uh, Mr. Kofi Annan has a legitimate right to issue whatever statement he has. But John Mama equally has a legitimate right to ensure that the right thing is done. He's not asking for anything extra. He just wants us to do a good job. And he remains upbeat, we remain confident, let's remain calm, let's remain peaceful, and go through the process. I contested as a parliamentary candidate. We went through the process. In fact, at one of the polling stations, the MPP agent asked us to count the ballot papers four times. My agent there was getting frustrated. I said, I allow him. If he wants a recount ten times, I allow him. I know what we're doing. We'll would win. And eventually, by 11 o'clock, we knew we had won. And so I don't think that is a problem at all. And those who say we are delaying, delay less than 48 hours. That cannot be a delay. 26,000 or so polling stations across the length and breadth of this country were collated all the pinches from every single polling station. And in less than 48 hours, we claim that there is a delay. I think that we should take a break and allow us to do a good job if we rush ourselves, we may derail the whole process. Let's do a good job. Let's have a fair issue. Let's put all the issues on the table so that all the parties will be clear in their mind. Now look, we did a good job. This is the final outcome. We accept it. And we'll move on with our lives. So at this point, since um, you, know, you, you, you concede that at least there is a chance of either party winning, uh, either yourself or the N NPP, from your analysis, th there is a chance of either of you winning. Uh, you must also have considered the possibility of losing. So is there a tipping point? Is there a number of constituencies which, when you have that number remaining and you haven't chipped away at the lead, as a party, you would consider it right to concede? I believe that we have a better chance of winning, and I don't speak for the MPP, and so I wouldn't concede that they have a chance of winning. I, I remain resolute and confident that based on what we've collected so far at our own level, we have a, a very good, 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 good opportunity to win. Two, the tipping point is not an issue for an individual like me to sit here and make a determination. I think that the MPP might also be considered a tipping point where Nana will probably call President Mahama and congratulate him. Is that the impression you and get? And so he should also be thinking of that, that it is very likely it is possible for him to be calling President Mahama to congratulate President Mahama. You uh, get the impression that the MPP is thinking along those lines? I'm saying they should be thinking. I get the impression that they have a very good chance of winning this election based on what I have seen. And so it's, it's, about what it's, you've seen. It's, it's not for one party or the other, but I think that it's in the collective interest of this country. And based on, as I said, uh, what we are doing at our center, it looks quite positive. Tell us but a bit about what you've seen and what that, you're that, doing at that the is center. What, that's why we condemned Mr. McManu, that in less than 12 hours, when some people even voted close to around 10 o'clock, you hold a press conference and claim that you've won by 64%. Even your projections is turned out to be false. So clearly, if I engage in what we condemned Mr. McMenu to be doing, I think that it will be unethical. And as we said, the repository and the official body that has a mandate to make a formal declaration is the Electoral Commission. And so we we'll hold on with our houses and keep checking and cross-checking our figures while remaining positive and wait for the Electoral Commissioner to make a formal and final declaration. Okay, so I mean without telling us specific figures, which is what you condemned of the NPP, uh, tell us uh, from, the, from, from what you have seen, and I'm assuming you've seen copies of the pink sheets from your polling agents from all the polling stations, all almost 29,000 of them. So from what you've seen, I have can you tell, seen a win? I can tell you President at least Mahama? what I have seen. In my constituency, Yape Kosovo constituency, we had about 147 polling stations or so. I won about 140. The MPP candidate won four. As I said in the previous election, 
the gap between the MPP and the NDC was about 600. This time, the gap is about 10,000. That's something I have seen. So if there's anything to go by, taking that in isolation and using that as a test case, it's clearly obvious that we are doing very well. And I've seen a similar trend in some constituencies that I wouldn't want to mention their names. But at least in my case, I can give you uh, a clear, vivid explanation of what happened. And so we remain a bit, let me be frank with you, we remain a bit. We don't want to sound overly confident, but we remain very, very a bit. Okay, um, uh, now, of course, um, Madam Shalatos say, said yesterday, this is something I wanted to double check with you, um, whether or not you, you as a party, you, you know anything about the Shalatos. Madam Shalatos say, said yesterday that some of the party agents at the National Coalition Center were refusing to sign the results of the uh, remaining constituencies uh, due to various complaints. Of course, you've, you've talked about how that is simply the right thing, you know, um, that we must just do the right thing and double check everything to make sure that it is all accurate. But then later, uh, yesterday, uh, your general secretary, Mr. Sidun Kitsia, kind of contradicted her by saying that, um, well, it was actually a decision at IPAC that um, the pink sheets must come before the um, agents sign. So is it that your agents are asking for things to be double checked or is it that all agents have agreed that um, they won't sign until the, uh, the pink sheets arrive? I don't think there's a contradiction. I don't think so. Charlotte says that look, some of the agents have declined to sign. General says that look, we must all check. And if I check and have issues, I wouldn't sign immediately. I said I have A and B issues. Let's ensure that we deal with them. And after dealing with them, if I'm satisfied, I sign. And so I'd rather see the two statements to be complementary rather than contradictory. Because if you're an agent and you are sent to a polling center, a coalition center, you would insist that the right thing is done. And so by insisting that the right thing is done, the EC has these results and says that these are the results. Can the agent sign? An agent could say, no, there's an anomaly here. I want that dealt with before I sign. So I'm not going to sign, or I'm unable to sign. Yes, the law eventually permits the EC to proceed, even without the signature from the agent. But it's only proper and prudent that if an agent of a political party raises an issue, they are given the opportunity to at least deal with that issue. And if it's reasonable, we deal with that. If we realize that there's something you cannot take on, you move on. And so I think that is part of the process. And as a nation, well, we ought to commend ourselves. Look, going into the election, the kind of rhetoric we had, the kind of allegations, wild allegations, verbal attacks on the chairperson of the EC, I think that she's proven a lot of skeptics wrong. It's not over yet, but if she's able to sustain this process and eventually deal with that, she'll come out as one of the best electoral commissioners we've ever had. I was personally worried when we started voting. But voting went off smoothly, without a hitch. I never heard of any major infraction. I remember 2012. I remember ballot papers are shot here. Uh, uh, the indelible ink is washable. This person cannot find his name. This, I mean, I think the look where commendation ought to be given. We ought to do that so that it encourages people to give up their best. Many have commended uh, Madam Charlotte Ose on the smoothness of this year's election, both locally and internationally. Uh, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit more about the trends of the results that have come in so far, uh, both presidential and parliamentary. Now, one thing we have noticed, uh, particularly in the stronghold of the NDC, is that as a general rule, Nane Kufuado hasn't won many more votes than he did in the last election. But what has happened is that President Mahama has lost many more votes than he did in the last election. What do you think is accounting for this? Well, I, I exercise a bit of caution <laughs> in dealing with this subject matter. Because I said, we have disagreed with some of the figures the media has put out there. And so if you want to do the analysis solely based on what the media has put out there, you might be doing the analysis on a false premise. But these and, and are figures certified no, at I'm, the I'm, constituency I'm building um, a point. Uh, collation centers. Yes, I'm building a point. Okay. So uh, that is one. Two is that from what I have seen, President Mahama has done phenomenally well. 
compared to his um, parliamentary candidates. There are instances where the president garners about 40,000 more than a parliamentary candidate. Sometimes 15,000 more than a particular parliamentary candidate. Which figures so, are you relying on? For instance, if you take Salaga, uh, Salaga stuff, I mean, it's obvious. The president went way ahead. And some, even some constituencies in the Volta region, the president is way, 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 way ahead of them. And we have a list. I could make that available to you. So clearly, is this list from the EC? No, this is what we also, we also tabulate results. And mm. so we have every right to depend on the results that we tabulate, just as others have the right to do so. And so clearly, in my opinion, the president remains very popular. Yes, you could have an isolated issue. Where, for instance, and let me just take myself, assuming someone is, 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 is upset with me and not upset with the president. The president decides, well, look, because I'm upset with Jinapo, I wouldn't go and vote without realizing that you probably would be punishing a presidential candidate. You could, but it's too early to begin to draw those conclusions. Let's remain calm. Let's get all the figures. And I'm sure that as a party, after winning, we would look at all the figures and try to see how we can improve on those figures. And so, so the theory you're indicating here is that uh, perhaps in some of these constituencies uh, where the NDC has not done well, it's the parliamentary candidates who have let the side down. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. There could be so many factors. I just gave an example with myself and saying that it could. And that is even hypothetical because, as I indicated, we have to wait to have the full complement of the results. In fact, so many factors could account for that. A particular area, I had to develop a strategy because it was a market day. And that community would not afford to let off the market go. Because that is the only day within that week that they could purchase somewhere. And so you needed to have a plan B in order to deal with that. And so several factors could account for that. But I want to insist that it's too early to begin to draw conclusions on that. All I have said are hypothetical scenarios that one could look at. But when the results are finally declared, certified results from the EC, and we are all convinced that these are the real results, then we could begin to break them down and make those analyses. Very well. Now, from, from your own figures, without revealing them to us, uh, because you, you insist that it wouldn't be the right thing to do, but from your own figures, do you find that there are, there are areas in which um, the president has got a lot less votes this year than he did last year, the last election? I would have to check. I would have to check. All I, I know is that the president has done much, much better than almost all of us as pieces. And, and it's a general trend. You can see the trend across the length and breadth of the country, that in most constituencies, the president has done very, very well. Now we have our eye on the ball. So this is not a time to go doing post-mortem and checking last year which figure you got, which figure you didn't get. We are working towards victory. We want victory. And so until the results are declared, this is certainly not the time to go around doing all kinds of post-mortem. Let's finish with this exercise. Let's get it done. Let's congratulate ourselves. Then we can begin to look at whether you got less votes here or not. Because once you take your eye off the ball, you could find yourself in trouble. So apart from these 50 constituencies remaining for the EC to, um, to, to declare, the parliamentary results are in for the 225 or so. And it appears that the NPP has won more seats. How is your party reacting to this, and how do you explain it? What, what went wrong? The party would set a limit. The party would sit. What I do know is that, after all this, the party will set up a very formidable team to go around, talk to people, collate views, interview people, do all kinds of work and come out with a working document for us. And it's obvious, take Savulugu. Two candidates contested, one won, one was aggrieved, decided to go independent. They split the votes. And if you look at the vote between the 
NPP candidate who won, and the two candidates. It's, it's unfortunate. It's, it's obvious that, but for the fact that the two candidates decided to contest each other, there was no way the NDP candidate was going to win. And so if you added the two candidates, you realize that President Mama was way, way, way ahead of Nana Kovado. If we take, I think, Laura, where my friend Anthony Cabo is reported to have won, I think it was bit Zidane. Certified to have won. Um, Certified. Yeah. Let me, let me, let me. <laughs> he's my brother, he's my friend. So let me congratulate him. Uh, bearing in a, uh, without prejudice, let me congratulate But clearly two candidates. I think they did and Abu Samson also. It's split the votes. And so these are lessons for us. But uh, this, these are obvious uh, things that we we'll learn from. I'm sure the party would sit. The party would consider all that and I have confidence in this party. And I say that deep, deep down my heart. I have absolute confidence in the NDC. I believe that is the best party you can ever belong to. And I'm proud to be NDC and let's see how we move forward as a party. This is the time to close our ranks, remain focused, remain vigilant more importantly as we are almost securing victory and see where it takes us. We're talking with Mr. John Jinapo. He is the Deputy Power Minister, and he's uh, just won his, uh, his constituency's elections as well to come back and represent his party in Parliament. Am I right? This is the first time I'm going to Parliament. Oh, it's your first time it's going first to Parliament. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> and welcome to the big house, as I'm sure they'll tell you when you get there. Yeah. Uh, of course, these are your election headquarters coming to you live on the Joy News channel on Multi TV and also on Joy 99.7 FM. Now, election result updates are brought to you by McDan Shipping Company, your total logistics partner, as well as NIIT. Enroll for quality computer education in Ghana. Now, the official partners for the 2016 election headquarters are Phoenix Insurance and Phoenix Life Assurance. And let's say thank you to Papa's Pizza, Taste It, Love It, and Cowbell Coffee. Smile and have a sunshine day for continuing to refresh us here at election headquarters. We continue our conversation with Mr. John Jinapo and bring you highlights of what's happening on social media and so much more right here on your election headquarters.